Hello everyone, I'm David. I'm with the Australian Student Christian Movement and I'm here with Melody. Melody, tell us who you are. Hello, uh, like David said, my name is Melody. I am currently a second year student at the University of Southern California, all the way in California in the United States. Um, and I am a progressive Christian. I also identify as a member of the LGBTQ community. So that's me. Excellent. And can you tell us what you're studying? And I know the answer yes. to this. I'm, I'm studying game design. We had a very lovely conversation 10 minutes ago where I shamed David. <laughs> because I know very little. But I did yeah. mention a few games. So, it's okay. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. So my first question is, what is progressive Christianity? Yeah, um, I would say progressive Christianity is, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. I think it's a form of Christianity that doesn't hold itself to the more sort of uh, rigid or like traditional ways of thinking that you might associate with Christianity. So um, a lot of progressive Christians may not take the entire Bible literally, you know, maybe the creation story, we won't like necessarily believe that it's actually exactly how it happened or things like, I don't know, laws of Leviticus and things like that. We just have a more sort of open perspective and worldview on it. A lot of progressive Christians are also more like liberal in terms of kind of social attitudes and opinions. So a lot of progressive Christians support gay marriage or support abortion and all those sorts of things. I often hear people say that Christianity is kind of, you know, it's outdated, it's irrelevant. Do you think that applies to progressive Christianity as well? Or do you think you could make a case that, well, actually it is relevant? I, I think I would say it's relevant. I think because progressive Christianity, you know, we do sort of keep a more open framework and we do sort of follow what's happening in society a little more and like you know as society has become more liberal over time which i think is like a trend that you can clearly see um i think progressive christianity has sort of followed that curve whereas more traditional christianity has maybe not and stayed with like maybe what you would call like older values or traditions and i have conservative christians say to me well we do better than progressive Christians. You know, we have more members, we have youth groups are bigger. Why do you think that is? Or, or do you, and do you agree with it? I think I would agree with it. You know, my experience has been that progressive Christianity has been like, you know, our congregations are smaller and, you know, our, we have a college fellowship on campus here and our fellowship is much, much smaller than the like 30 other Christian groups that are mostly, or like, all other than us are like more traditional Christianity and they have like 30 members whereas like we hit five on a good day um, and I think part of that is probably just because it's what people are used to and you know people are very stagnant to change I would say and so if and a lot of Christians you know they grow up in the church or even if they didn't when they first go to church, they'll, they're more likely to attend like a tr more traditional conservative church than they are to like specifically go out and try and find one of the progressive churches that are out there because they are out there, but you have to like sort of look for them. So I think because, you know, these traditional churches are so well established, you know, they're rooted in like hundreds of years of history sometimes. And because they're well-founded and easy to find, I think that lends itself to them having more members and of course like people that have grown up in conservative churches are not very they're reluctant to leave I would say just because it's like a whole process to leave the conservative church I would say and when it comes to liberals and Christians uh, conservative Christians and there's always seems to be these battles that go on between the two sides how can we work with them so it's kind of not just always you know battling each other is there a way to sort of get on the same page and have a good relationship with one another? I think so. I mean, like when it comes down to it, we're all Christians. Like we may be progressive Christians or liberal Christians or evangelical or all these different denominations, but like Christian is still the overarching umbrella that encompasses us all. And because of that, you know, I think we have a lot more in common than like you might we might think because we can get into like the nitty-gritty details of like oh what piece of theology do you believe what do you believe about this issue or this issue that's super controversial but like if you 
like search down to the like core truths of Christianity. We all believe like Jesus is like our savior. We all believe that God is love and he wants us to spread that love. And I think part of like core Christianity is like agreeableness and like being open to have those dialogues and like work with each other towards like a single unified goal of like, you know, spreading God's love into the world, which I think is like the whole the whole point of Christianity. So if if we can like get past all these theological divisions, then I think Christianity would be much better for it. And what about the critiques that um, people have of progressive Christianity that you you're just picking what you want or you'll you know it's not Christianity. Yeah. Um... I mean, I would argue that every branch of Christianity sort of does a little bit of that picking and choosing. You know, they may say that they're not, but like, if you take a look at the Bible, you know, the Bible itself is like contradictory towards itself in places. So like, you have to be picking and choosing in a way for it, like, no matter what you believe. Um, so I would say to critiques, you know, like, I would say, let people believe what they believe is my sort of uh, way of going about it. Um, there's that verse where it's like, before you like condemn your neighbor, like take your take a look at yourself. So I would say like, if any, everyone can just like, if someone says they're a Christian, even if they say they're like a progressive Christian, I don't think you should try and challenge them on it. I think you should just let them like figure it out for themselves. And I'm sure like whatever branch of Christianity anyone believes, they've done some processing or some thinking on how they arrived to that position. And I think that if everyone could respect like that sort of individual process of like spirituality and faith and like discernment that each person has gone through to get to where they are in their Christian journey, you know, like that's that's the whole like basis of it. Like, yeah. And you said uh, earlier that you sort of identify with the LGBTQ community. Can you yes. explain what it's like being a Christian and identifying? Yeah. So it's it's weird at times. <laughs> you know, I I identify as a lesbian. So um, you know, when I was figuring that out in high school, you know, I was in high school I was and like all growing up I was like part of a more traditional church you know and I grew up in church you know my mom would bring me and my sisters to church like when we were young and then like middle school high school we went to youth group and all that and like I like very much was one of those like youth group Christian kids like I did like youth worship team and I would like go to like go early on Sundays to do like focus group which was like this extra group that we would do like readings we would do like a bible reading group and throughout the school year and we would like have memory verses and all that so i was very much ingrained in that sort of like uh more traditional christianity mindset and so like coming to terms with like being gay was a very big like thing for me and like I like still have not been able to come out at home like I'm here in Los Angeles now but like at home in the Bay Area and with the people from high school the people from my church there and like my family like I haven't been able to come out because of that traditional church community and so I think like it's such a it feels like such a conflict I, I don't think it is but it can feel like one especially when you're in a traditional church and not a progressive one and so for like the two to three years where I was still in traditional Christianity and I still con considered myself a more like conservative Christian or like at least in that community I was um, it was a very like like two warring sides of my identi identity I would say and so it was a lot of like research and like reading like different opinions you know if you do some research into like lgbtq christianity and like sort of opinions on that you'll find like there's sort of three groups or like beliefs i think which is like there's completely non-affirming and 
these are also people who like believe that you can change your sexuality and maybe like believe in conversion camps. And then there's um, like non-affirming, but they like they like accept that it's a part of your identity and you can't change it, but they believe that you have to be celibate or like if you are like born gay, then you have to stay single your entire life. That's another like group of beliefs. And that was the group that my church back at home falls into. And then there's completely affirming. So you can be in relationships, you can get married, all that. So I was in camp number two for like most of my life, but now I'm in camp number three. And the process of like moving from camp to camp was very, it's a very difficult thing because when you're like raised in that sort of mindset, it's so, so deeply ingrained in your way of thinking and your way of acting. And so like the second I was like, oh shoot, I'm gay. It was such a like, what am I gonna do about this? Like, how am I gonna tell people? Will I tell people? And like, what will I do? Because growing up I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get married. Like, I would like to like spend my life with someone and like be in a romantic relationship. And so once I hit that moment of realizations, I was like, like, what now? Like it changed, like, I, it's like controversial to like, or like, it's not, people don't like it when you like make being gay your entire identity, but I like firmly say like that change, that moment of realization has changed my entire life and will continue to change my entire life because I was like raised in church and am a Christian. So very long story that is going to keep continuing, but um, three years of research, like going in throughout high school after that moment of realization. And then I eventually came to the conclusion that basically believing that it was not okay, it was not sustainable for my mental health, my spiritual health, and generally it was just not good for me to keep believing that these two parts of my identity were conflicting. So then from there, I basically was at a crossroads where I could either, uh, I could either leave the church and like leave Christianity behind because it was not sustainable. And like, like faith is something that I found more easily changeable than my sexuality or find a way to reconcile the two and like keep being Christian and being gay and like be okay with both of those things. And so I chose path number two because I deep down am really like, I do really believe there is God, a God. And I do really believe that like Jesus is the savior and that like, you know, all of, all of those basic tenets of Christianity. So then college happened and I was like, I want to find a faith group on campus. And then I, looking around on the internet, found Progressive Christians at USC, which was the only active faith group on campus that is affirming of uh, same-sex marriage, which is kind of shocking because we're in a big, it's a, USC is a very big college campus. LA is a big city but it's still like one of 30 Christian groups and it's the only one that's affirming, which was very surprising to me. But I joined the group and it was very small. You know, there was like three, three members there. And then, so I joined and I was four or like regular members that would go every week. But, you know, the pastor that we work with is affirming, his church is affirming and that's the church I go to now on Sundays. And that has basically, been my life since going to college, you know, going to an affirming church and affirming fellowship. And it's been much better for my mindset and emotional health than, you know, being in an unaffirming environment, just because I think, you know, when it's unaffirming, you know, it's, like I said, such a conflict and, you know, brings so much discomfort you know, hear, even hearing pastors say like one-off remarks, like, oh, please pray for those who are struggling with same-sex attraction. Like even that one sentence is, you know, it's so much more harmful than like they probably understand because, you know, pastors saying that are probably not struggling with it. And so they say it and they, but they're not struggling with it. So 
you know, they, they, yeah, I, I always say like, you can't under, like you think you can, but you really can't understand unless you're living it, which is, you know, my life. So very long story, but that's, that's pretty much what it is. No, not at all. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. And, and the church has done tremendous damage, I think. To, um, to people uh, why by those comments you mentioned you know let's pray for yeah. this and you're not welcome and, and tr tremendous damage and um it pushes a lot of people away even people who don't don't identify um yeah in, in that group because they say look what you're doing for my friends look what you're doing for my family yeah can you tell me more about your group at the university what yeah, you guys do sure. and so we are progressive christians at usc i'm currently one of the co-leaders um, and we have fellowship every Wednesday night. So tonight we will have fellowship. And basically at fellowship, uh, our pastor, Sonny, he leads a discussion through whatever topic he's prepared. Sometimes there's a passage to go with it, sometimes not. And then basically just, you know, talk. You know, we, at the start of every meeting, we go over like what's been happening in our lives over the past week we have like a rose which is a good thing a thorn a bad thing and then a bud which is something that we're looking forward to we all check in with each other and then we have a discussion and then we have prayer requests we pray and that's pretty much it all while enjoying very delicious snacks <laughs> oh excellent now there's a lot of issues in the world we you know poverty gun violence do you see progressive christianity being able to solve that, help with that in any way? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, as much as any other religious group, I would say. Any other religious group that is kind of focusing on social issues, which I think progressive Christianity very much does. Um, because I think we are very focused on, you know, the sort of, uh, like, social support i'm sure there's an actual word for it but like we we're very like focused on social issues and like trying to help sort of you know all sorts of things like uh yeah i think so because i think we offer like a faith based perspective i guess which i mean you know christianity is supposed to be about you know helping people which i think progressive christianity does a does a good job of it i remember reading a, a document from the vatican that came out ages ago saying we have to remember that the holocaust happened in a mostly christian country and it sort of always made me kind of reflect on that saying you know we're told that christianity is about love and caring and and all of that and you think yeah the holocaust happened in in a, in a place where most of the people there were christian and then we look you know say throughout the world in, in places that are dealing with a lot of things um, there's a lot of Christians there, but there's still a lot of uh, violence or racism or whatever it might be. Why do you think Christianity hasn't been better at being able to stop those evils? What a, what a good question. Um, I think you it's so easy to get caught up in like the other parts of Christianity. Like the Bible is huge. There's so many things you could focus on within the Bible that, you know, that the God's love part and like number one rule, love God, number two rule, you know, love your neighbor. That's like so easily lost, especially when you get into like those theological battles or like when you focus too much on like one rule or one line in the Bible, then you really like lose sight of the whole thing. And it's so, so easy to do that, even like not in Christianity, but even with like other things, like other faith groups or, you know, other, any kind of group, like political parties. Like it's so easy to get caught up in one thing and then forget about like the whole big idea. And so, yeah, it's just hard, you know? And like humanity is not that great when you, when you really look at it and so it's it's hard for anybody but you know christians are just part of that group of people that it's it's hard uh, indeed uh, can you tell us about progressive thinkers that you that you follow progressive writings out there that we should sure look into? yeah um i really like queer theology dot 
.org, .net, hold on, .com, queertheology.com. Um, obviously, I'm a queer Christian, but they have like progressive sort of, uh, you know, they have articles and they have podcasts and they have, you know, talks and stuff where they just talk about various topics. You know, they focus a little more on like queer theology. So like stuff specifically regarding the LGBTQ community, but they are still very good for like, you know, just figuring out sort of how to be more open-minded while still being Christian. So I really like queer theology. Um, I think, what was it? There's definitely other things, but I can't really think of them right now. I think uh, as, a, as a queer Christian, I like looking up other queer Christians that have sort of done the work to like get to where they are in their journey. So like um, like a year ago, I found Julian Baker, who's, she's a musician. So she's a singer songwriter and a lot of her music deals with like, she's a, she's a lesbian and she's also Christian, so like me. And a lot of her music deals with like spirituality and then she struggled with like substance abuse in her youth. So it deals with that as well. And so I think just like listening to her work and like reading interviews that she's done where she sort of talks about like spirituality and like how she's gotten to where she is in her faith journey and like reading about other queer Christians or other like progressive Christians who have done the work to arrive where they are is really helpful. You know, just Googling like progressive Christianity or like queer Christians, LGBTQ Christians, and stuff like that is very helpful. And like reading media that addresses read like consumer media that addresses you know that sort of dichotomy or like shows like more progressive christians is also really nice for me um, i recently read a book called her name in the sky by kelly quindlin i believe and it's about like uh two teenage girls who are like in a, this catholic community but they fall in love and you know what are the repercussions of that how do they deal with that and you know that book to me was very sort of healing and very like like some parts of that book will stay with me forever just because of how relevant or like how seen that book made me feel it was very very helpful so just like consuming media that is healing rather than damaging and sort of shows that these two things can be aligned, you know, progressive thinking and Christianity, LGBTQ, queerness and Christianity can be aligned. So anything that sort of shows that. And what about uh, within the Bible or any kind of stories that really speak to you? Parables or verses? Sure. Um, I really like reading the Psalms and the Proverbs. Um, I also like reading the Gospels. Uh, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, I think Psalms and Proverbs, you know, those are just pieces of wisdom, which I really like. You know, they're just good old Christian wisdom or like it's even like songs praising God to help me like sort of remember God and focus on him a little more. Um, and then the Gospels, you know, those are stories of Jesus, you know. So those are like, to me, some of the probably like the, if I had to pick part of the Bible to like keep forever and destroy everything else I'd probably pick one of the gospels just because it's like what Jesus was doing and you can see like his work specifically and you know what we sort of want to emulate is Jesus's work of service and like love because he really was just like all about you know serving the community that he was in like through whatever means so and when you meet people who are not Christian, what's the kind of general idea that they have about Christianity? So I've been asked, how can I defend Christianity? And I say to them, it depends what you think I'm defending, you know, because I am, you know, a progressive Christian. Christian. So, you know, sometimes they'll have a, a particular view of Christianity. How, how do you find when you sort of interact with people who aren't Christian? Do they often say the same thing? Do they have the same kind of criticism? Yeah, I think, you know, when I or when people find out I'm Christian or when I tell people I'm Christian, I don't know. I think when people think Christian, they immediately think like the people holding up signs at pride parades, like protesting, or like they immediately think like more conservative Christianity, which, you know, 
is fine because that's most of Christianity. So I don't expect people to like Im- immediately think progressive Christianity. Um, I think for me also, especially in LA where I'm like out, like when people find out I'm Christian, sometimes they'll ask like, oh, like how are you this and this? So like I had a friend ask me like a few weeks ago, like how did you reconcile that? Or like, have you reconciled that? And then I sort of explained to him like my sort of way of thinking. Um, But defense of Christianity, I would say I haven't run into many people that have asked me like, why are you Christian? Or like asked me to defend it. Or like if they ask why I'm Christian, I'm like, oh, I was raised in it and I like really genuinely believe like the core tenets of it. So, and then they're just like, oh, okay. Um, but I tend not to try, I try not to bring it up just because I know it's it's like a sore subject, especially in LA where it's, where we're so like progressive and like, it's a very like liberal city. Um, so I try not to bring it up too much just because I don't want to cause any conflict. Um, but yeah, if, if people ask me to defend it sometime, I think I would generally say like the, the to its core or at its very core, Christianity is about loving other people. And I believe in loving other people. So I believe in Christianity. And in America, uh, what's the sort of the big issues now in Christianity that you're sort of following or that sort of making it in the news? Because we often here in Australia, we'll, we'll sort of hear about Christianity um, linked to Donald Trump, conservative Christians, uh, that sort of yeah. thing. And so just what's the big sort of issues facing yeah. Christianity in America? Um, definitely tied to politics more than it should be. <laughs> you know, separation of church and state, but it's not very separated, I would say. You know, a lot of people associate, you know, conservative Christianity with Republicans or like Christianity in general and in general with Republicans. So I would say that's part of it. And like social issues like uh, abortion is a big one. Um, I think it was Texas recently passed an abortion ban. One of the red states recently recently banned like a very very or recently passed a very very strict abortion ban, and I think like abortion bans are like closely linked with Christianity in a lot of people's minds and like in laws minds because most uh, I feel like most pro life people are probably Christian. I don't know if that's correct, but that's how I see it anyway. Um, so that's one of the big hot topic issues. Um, I think LGBTQ and issues and Christianity have always been like very like largely tied to each other, and I think they will continue to be very tied to each other. Um, so the, I feel like those are the two big ones: would be LGBTQ rights and abortion rights. And do you have sort of uh, any theories on why people are leaving the church? You know, we always hear, oh, the, you know, the numbers are going down or young people aren't being drawn to it. And the letter from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that he wrote from uh, Birmingham jail, he was saying even then, this is, you know, 1960s, he was saying young people are leaving the church because it doesn't yep. sort of um, have relevance for them. It's not standing up for what's right. So this is not a new issue, but do you have any sort of theories on, on why people aren't as interested in Christianity. And I know that it's sort of a lot more complex because some churches are doing well, et cetera, but just sort of do you have any theories on why it appeals to less people this yeah. day and age? Um, I think part of it is just because young people, I don't know, we, we like our freedom, I guess. And we, we think, or yeah, a lot of, things that young people like nowadays, I think they see as contradictory to Christianity. And and sometimes they are contradictory or like con- contradictory to like conservative Christianity, which is what people think of, again, what people think of when they think Christianity is conservative Christianity. So like, as soon as they see that conflict, they're like, ah, dump Christianity, do this other thing. Um, I think also, 
organized religion is becoming very unpopular or has become very unpopular, you know, like people think like, you know, I, I can do spirituality or I can do religion on my own. Like I can be spiritual on my own. I don't need a church to do that, which like is, I would say is pretty true um, for the most part. Um, so that's part of it, I think, like, you know, dump the organization, but keep the spirituality part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, those are the, I think those are the two major things, you know, it's at odds with a lot of things that people like, and it's easy to dump religion because it's like, like people don't care for it. And people don't like the organization part of it, and you can keep the spirituality without the organization. And, you know, when people think religion, they think conservative Christianity, which is very, very unpopular. <laughs> so, at least among young people. And what about your relationship with other other faiths? Do, you, do the progressive Christians, uh, like your club, or, or generally have a lot to do with other faiths? Yeah, we're uh, my our our club, progressive Christians. We're very like open and collab, like we're very open to you know interfaith dialogues. And USC has like the interfaith council, I think is what it's called, where like people from all these different faiths you know get together and sort of speak on like interfaith beliefs and sort of just have an open discussion about like, how our different beliefs. Um, we were talking about this last week during fellowship, actually, sort of um, taking practices from other faiths. I think we were talking about like one of the faiths. I think maybe it was Buddhism. They have this practice of mindfulness that they do. And we were sort of talking about, you know, even though it's from Buddhism, which is this other faith, we can take it and apply it to our own like Christian faith and sort of those practices are still relevant and useful for us even if theirs is like slightly different in how they you know believe what it's doing and I think it's you know it's it's very true that we have a lot in common even though we're of different faiths and I think that there's no need to be in such arms over you know, I'm Christian, you're Muslim, I'm Christian, you're Catholic, you know, we're all people of faith, we all believe in, you know, some higher power. So I think we can, we can learn to get along, <laughs> and, you know, take from each other the useful things. Yeah, we, we had a Muslim uh, scholar here say that God's love is bigger than just one religion, he can love everybody, he doesn't just have yeah. to be one religion. And uh, kind of way I thought about it is that if you only had one religion you'd have a lot less people thinking about god and, and and praising god because it would be like well i don't i'm i don't like that religion so i won't have any religion but because we have buddhism and muslims and sikhs and christians there's more people around the world that are praising god whether they call yeah. him god or her god you know but there are exactly. sort of more people are religious as a result of, of, of more religion what about your relationship with sort of secular groups atheists yeah, um, I think secular groups, um, I, I will say I think we work less with secular groups than religious groups just because there's like, you know, with religious groups we have that like common dialogue of, you know, we're people of faith, whereas secular groups it's like, oh, like, where is that connect that we can find? Um, but I think spiritual secular people you know maybe you're atheist but you're still like consider yourself spiritual that's definitely like a little easier because it's like oh we have this similar belief of like this spirituality um like but people that are straight up like atheist like or agnostic you know don't believe in any god it's it's a little harder but i think you can still find that point of connection of like believing like you should love other people you know you know that the golden rule you know treat others how you want to be treated that's still like you know that's not tied to any religion like you could say it sort of comes from like a certain religion or like certain like faith or like this verse or whatever but like even atheists learn that at a young age you know treat other people how you want to be treated and i think that rule is like can be a point of connection you know you still believe in the value of like the core value of like loving other people and i think that you know treating others nicely is a very easy thing to connect with people on 
can I ask you about relevance? Because your your comment that you said that you know anybody can follow the golden rule or not follow the golden rule, whether you're religious or not. Yeah. The, the relevance of, of religion, because sometimes religious people say, well, you know, you need God to be good. And people say, well, no, you don't. And there's plenty of Christians who do very ungood things. So yeah. what is the relevance of Christianity? If you can be good without God, you, you can have meaning without God. You can have people who are Christian who still struggle for meaning or, or deal with depression. So what is the relevance of, of Christianity? Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a very good question. I would like to compliment you on that question because... Um, that is a very like, like that's a point people will bring up a lot is like you know non-christians will ask christians like why do you need god to be good or like how come people are still bad with god and i think that the relevance of christianity and to be fair least, to you i don't really have a good answer i've, I've sort yeah. of pondered it i really don't have a good answer yeah i i would say i don't have a good answer that would satisfy anybody or most people or anybody, uh, I just have an answer that like satisfies me, I guess, <laughs> you know. And and my answer to it would probably be like, um, what is my answer? Like there, um, I I think I don't need God to be good. Like I don't think I. Like if I left my faith behind, I think I could still be a good person without it. And there are plenty of good people that I know that are not religious and, you know, they don't have a God, but they're still good. So it is possible. And I think I could do it theoretically. But I think the relevance of God and faith is it's like this. I don't know. It's like this internal sort of. Thing, I guess like you know like if you believe in a soul whether you're religious or not like to me I believe in a soul and I believe that God has sort of creative created the soul and I think that because of that sort of creation aspect of it is like it has it's easier to find value or meaning with God than without and it's easier to you know see the purpose of life or that believe or believe that life has value with God than without it. Um, so I think for me, you know, God just makes it easier to find, you know, on like sort of darker, sadder days where I'm like, you know, what's the point of all this? I can turn to my faith and be like, um, you know, there's God and God created me to like be on this world and sort of you know live my life and there are so many good things in life that god has created for you know humans and me to sort of experience and enjoy and you know i just think that that's you know that's beautiful that you know there's this higher power that has you know created this whole world and life for us to experience so you don't think that sort of religion gets in the way of solving certain issues like i often hear people talk about war saying oh thanks a lot religion you're giving us all these wars and then you turn it, you're like the Crusades, they always go to the, you know, they go to the Crusades. Then you say, well, actually, there were Christians like St. Francis who tried to stop the Crusades. So it was a, you know, it was a mixed bag. And there's lots of peace groups that were founded by Christians. But do, do you think religion gets in the way of stopping any of the problems that we have? I think it can, but it can also be a help. You know, like anything, I think religion can be a double bladed sword or double edged whatever the term is, um, you know, it can be helpful or it can be harmful, just like anything else. Um, and it's not that just because something is tied to religion doesn't necessarily make it one or the other, you know, it still depends on, you know, the, the people or like the organization acting behind it and the actions they take. But yeah, I think it, it can be either. Because one of the criticisms that we hear is that, uh, you know, you have certain Christian groups saying don't use condoms and the people say well that's not helping it's by HIV AIDS and you have some Christians coming out saying well it's not just about whether you're Christian or not there are some people who won't use condoms for other reasons so you can't yeah. just sort of pin it all on 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 religion yeah I, I think religion is an easy scapegoat for a lot of things but yeah, it, it can be it can be there are people on other side of either side of it that are religious so you really can't lump it all into one group can I ask you about uh, progressive Christianity, like the division? So I, 
because I think, yeah, like you said, there's always this kind of people like to simplify things and say this is what Christianity is. But so I use the term progressive Christianity, but I imagine that there's a lot of diversity within that, or or, or perhaps a lot of arguments. Can you sort of give us a bit of an insight into what the kind of the, the differences are within progressive Christianity? Yeah, um, I will say I have not been a member of the progressive Christian community for long, and you know, it, in the larger scheme of things, you know, I'm kind of part of the like progressive Christian Christian group, like community here, but at home, I'm still like in the sort of conservative Christianity community. So I don't know much, I will say, but I think there probably is division within even progressive Christianity and our sort of more open-mindedness. As with anything, there will be division. Um, I think part of it is probably, you know, how open or how willing we are to collaborate with conservative Christianity is probably one of the big conflicts. You know, do we open up those dialogues um, like on our end, you know, they, they still have to decide like whether they want to be open to hearing from us, but like from our side, do we want to sort of communicate and have those discussions, those difficult discussions where we might disagree on things that like, you know, maybe those discussions would be harmful or hurtful, but do we still want to have them? And for me, like, I think like any discussion is better than nothing, you know? I think we should still have those like open dialogues, even if, even if, you know, like you'll hear from, like if you're like a progressive Christian who is affirming and you're talking to Christians who are not affirming, you know, that conversation could be harmful, but I think it's still a conversation that would be helpful or like, yeah, helpful for both sides to sort of understand where the other side is coming from. But I think some progressive Christians would say like, no, we shouldn't open that avenue at all because this is such like an important issue and such a like critical issue that we don't want to like sort of open up to that other side of it. So I think that's one of the things that people disagree, probably disagree about. Um, I think also interfaith dialogues and sort of, you know, what do we believe as progressive Christians about other religions because we're open to conservative Christianity, which some might say has like very different sort of beliefs, like core beliefs than progressive Christianity. And we're sort of like, if we are under the same branch umbrella of Christianity with them, you know, should we like have that same sort of mindset towards other religions who like, you know, their differences are maybe a little more than say us versus like uh, conservative Christianity, but they're still like just a little leap from you know the smaller differences. You know, they're still like you know they still believe in God, so we still have that in common. But like, yeah. So I I would say just dialogues with people of other beliefs is probably the hot the hot issue of division. And it's better to talk than not talk. Yeah. What do you think the church, and I say church as it's one block, but obviously we know there's a lot of diversity. What would be your recommendation to the sort of the church hierarchy in the United States? What should what should the church be doing? Churches be doing what? Oh boy, what a good question. Um, I think just more willingness to engage with people of different faiths, and not. I think also the church gets caught up in itself a little too much, you know, we're dealing with all these like uh, theological conflicts or issues and discussions. And then we sort of bar ourselves into that and then we lose track of, oh, are we, you know, are we serving our community? You know, local churches, are we opening our doors to everyone? Like truly opening our doors to everyone. Are we, you know, are we like supporting the homeless community where our church is? Are we, you know, attending events and like seeing what the social issues are and like seeing where we can be helping people? And I think, you know, just churches should be 
like safe havens for the communities that they're in and the communities that they should serve or don't serve that they should be serving um so i think that that would be my biggest recommendation or call for churches in america is just to like really serve the communities that they're in because that's the whole point and can you tell us a little bit about los angeles oh boy los angeles what a what a place <laughs> uh it's a it's a very big city there are so many people and so many churches so many different diverse people and it's it's truly such a city of diversity um my it's like the first city I've lived in because I lived in like a suburb that was near a city, but not in the city. Um, but I would say, you know, Los Angeles is so big and so diverse. And there are, you know, there are regular churches, there are smaller churches like the one I attend, there are sort of medium sized churches. And then there are, you know, Los Angeles is home to, I think, multiple mega churches, which are those like thousand people churches and their worship services are, are crazy and attended by thousands of people and they, their pastors are like famous, like actually famous, which is crazy to me. Um, so I think Los Angeles, you know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing, I think. Um, I, I can't advise mega churches just because I, I feel like mega churches are in such a different realm than like churches that are just in a community. Um, but for the smaller churches like mine, you know, serve the community, same thing as always. You know, Los Angeles is divided into all these like subsections. So, you know, serve the streets that you're around. And I know like my church has like food banks on certain days of the week where like people in the community come and can like eat free meals and like bring back free groceries so i think stuff like that is like like any other church or any other place is critical serve the community and what about los angeles itself in terms of like if you walked around now what, what are we going to see what what what's there what are the what are the attractions the attractions i know there's hollywood uh, there's hollywood there's uh, Koreatown is pretty nice. They got good food. There's Little Tokyo, also nice food and nice places to be. Um, there's, I don't know, I'm, I'm even still like doing some exploring. Those are like the major districts I've been to so far is Koreatown and Little Tokyo. And like I've gone like a little further east to like, what's east? Like uh, Santa Anita, I went over there, been up to Malibu. You know, the beaches are nice there. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, I mean, there's a ton, there's tons of stuff to do. I like going to movies. Um, the theaters are nice, even if the parking is expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's tons of stuff to do. There's lots of nice museums to go to and all sorts of things. Let's just search around. To find something <laughs> excellent well There's thank something you for everyone <laughs> excellent well thank you so much uh melody it was amazing to hear from you thank you so much for joining yeah thanks so much for having me